the skits, the songs, and the breaking time to concentrate what this is all about. It's about souls. Looking over here, you're a Navy man. I just had a Navy man from Michigan, um, goes to Trinity Baptist, and uh, he's known me for years. I've done bus ministry, I've done soul with him, and he just called me, he just graduated from the uh, crew camp, and wanted me to marry him and his uh, fiance. So we to Chicago at the end of October and married them. And I was thinking about the time I was in the Marines, and you know, the old saying in the Marines is, uh, the few, the proud, the Marines, but change it around. The few, the saved, the Christian. Amen. And uh, not to knock the military, thank God for the military, thank God for what I learned in the military, thank God for the time I was able to serve my country. But there's no better army to be in than the army of the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll never turn on you. It's a true army and it's a true cause. We don't always know if our armed forces are always going to fight for the right cause in these day and age. But we always know the Christian cause is the right cause. It's for the souls of men and women. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 1, verse 21, 29, excuse me. John chapter 1, starting at verse 29. John chapter 1, let's all stand for the reading of the Word of God. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said after me, Cometh a man which is before, before, before me, for he was before me. I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I come baptized with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit. Descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon me. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, and upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. And again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned and saw them following, and said unto him, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, the interpreted, Master, where dwell thou? And he saith unto them, Come and see. Come and see. Let's pray. Lord, help me now. As I preach thy word, that I say only what you'd have me say. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me power. People were tired and eaten. So I ask you now to help me to be direct and say what we need to hear for your glory. I pray for somebody here that's not saved. Save your soul. Show them there's a place called hell. You don't want them to go there. And for those of us that are saved, may we get a burden for souls tonight like we never have. And may we be used of you to keep as many out of hell as we can. Lord, if there's any sin in our life, and we get rid of it tonight, so you can totally speak to us, fill us, and send us out of here. In Jesus' name, amen. May you see you. Matthew 
4 and look at verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brothers of Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, and they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed them. Now, I want to say to you, first we see they discovered their need of forgiveness in John. They discovered their need of the Savior, and they followed him. And then we see they left their nets. They left all they owned. Missionaries leave everything they own and left. I've always been amazed by this passage. We just read Matthew, turn back to John. I've always been amazed because it shows they didn't ask no questions. They didn't get on the phone and call anybody. They just left everything they owned. They had found the Messiah. They followed. You know who told them? Their heart told them. Their heart told them. You know, people say, follow. Come 
And of all the things I ever learned from Kurt Sussman, that grip me more than anything. You may stop in your life and take a break from God, but hell doesn't have to take a break. That's what reality is about. It's not about digital phones, cell phones, Facebook. It's about hell or heaven. And only a few are going to hell. And the Bible says the majority are going to hell. We see here a call of salvation, a call to strength. We see they discovered their need of forgiveness. They finally found who the Messiah was, and they left their leaders. They left John the Baptist. They left their possessions, and they left their parents. What have you left for Christ? Mark 16, 15 says, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There was a there was a a general in World War II who said the person who makes the bullets, the bombs, the planes, and the tanks and the rifles is as important as the person or the soldier or the pilot on the battlefield. Right. The Christian that sends out tracks and money and faith and promise and gives that extra for the cause of Christ is as important as the person on the mission field. They can't work without each other. So we see we need to see the call to surrender, the call to follow, the call to surrender, the call of devotion and the call to dedication. Next we see the call to service and obedience and faith. Deuteronomy 10, 12, it says, But to fear the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. We need to have a heart service. And then the Bible says a glad service. Psalms 102, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with sincerity. And then we need to have a willing service. And 1 Chronicles 28, 19 through 20, it says, be strong and of a good courage and do it, and God will be with you. We need to have a willing service, remembering God is with you. You know this mission, I'm gonna leave this family, go seven years to China, and God's right there with you. He's as real as here as the person praying for you. People have left you, people have turned their back on you, but God never has. We need to remember that. You know, I thought of this as I studied the other day. In heaven, some saint, you're going to go to heaven someday. And you know, the Bible says God's not going to reveal my secret sins that I've been washed in the blood. Not going to reveal yours. If you're glad of that, then you're an amen. amen. But God says the half will be known of the things in quiet that are done for God will be brought out as good deeds and as blessings. That saint that's faithfully prayed and given to a missionary and faithfully supported the work of God, God's going to reveal that to some saint in Tanzania or in Africa or in Kenya or Ghana. You get saved, God's going to reveal that and say, that's the one that was supporting you and praying for you. And there's going to be saints in heaven shaking your hand, thanking you for your support. Because of your support, so-and-so missionary got to the field and led them to Christ. And they were going to hell on Buddhism. And they're going to thank you. God tells us that. It's a, the work you do for God lasts forever. Amen. The work we do for ourselves is temporary. How many of y'all used to look in the mirror? Now you don't like looking in the mirror. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> Some of us had the muscles, and now we don't. Some of us had the shape, and now we don't. And we hate those commercials when they say, you can look like me. <laughs> but, but what's going to last forever is what we're going to do for God. Can I hear an amen? amen. That's what we got to remember. Right. That's what we got to not forget. So we see a call to service. Obedience and faith. We need a heart service. 
We need a glass service. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with sincerity, singing and making melody in your heart. You know the two ladies that sit up front, the one in the wheelchair? She's not here tonight, is she? She told me she wasn't feeling good. I told her if she came tonight, I was going to sing to her. And I was going to sing a solo. I'm glad she's not here, but I know her. I tell her I wish she was here, but I'm glad I don't have to sing. She's, many of you make a great melody to the Lord. I make a joy for no man. But the Bible says we should have a glad service. No one take it, take it, take it. No matter how bad you can sing, you're singing unto the Lord. Be glad. Some of us Christians look like we're depressed half the time. We don't be happy in the giving and service of God. You know, one day John O'Reilly, she died in 1980 or 1981, one or the other. And in 1978, he was wiping down on his long, successful ministry as an evangelist, pastor, Bible teacher, and he was a woman of everything. And some of the greatest books I've ever read of him was one, Power of the Holy Ghost. And I read that thing six times. Learned a lot from John Rice's books. They're still alive today. But remember one time he told in one of his novels, how I went to this meeting, it was in the late 70s, and so he was getting ready to go on to heaven. And one day as he came to this church to preach, the pastor said to me, I have a lady back home. She can't come anymore. She has arthritis and back, back, both her knees. She can hardly walk. But I want you to see how she's been praying for you all her life. You've got to come talk to her. It, 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 it won't be right you leave her without me. John and I said, oh, I do that. So the pastor that night took him to see this dear lady, and he took her to the bed. He took him to the basement and showed out where this lady had been praying for John Rice since the early 30s, all the way up to the late 70s. And almost every meeting that man had ever preached, this dear old lady had been praying, and she had literally wore out a place in the floor from her knees. And he fell down on the ground and said, He is the weapon for God. He can pray every day. But your work will last forever. Amen. Don't talk it down, don't wipe it away. <clears throat> Make it a priority. Keep your family praying about what they're going to give. Say some of the candy bars, some of the Mary Janes, some, some of the little candy things you buy. And you take a little bit of that money and your kids motivate about the money you put away. They give to Mrs. Beach milk jugs. That's, Kids walking in the wilderness, every little kid, every person was having a part with the world mission. That's going to last an eternity. Amen. That's not vain. That's not stupid. That's not emotional. That's real. Yeah. A sick missionary with emphysema, ready to die. The doctor told him, you're going to die soon. You can't go back. He, he was on an island outside of Alaska with only a thousand people. And he was told you can't go back. And this missionary said, but Doc, you gotta go, I gotta go back. There's people there going to hell. I just led this woman to the Lord, and her husband's lost, and her kids are lost. I gotta go back. You'll die. You got a chance to live if you stay here. I gotta go. And he went back and continued for two to three years to have died. But his work that he did is still going on 60 years later. The work of God is eternal. More important than any business, any trial and dog, any millionaire's work ever. It's his souls of eternity. Don't ever like that. Don't ever let anything become more important than the heart of God. In Matthew 8, we don't have time. I'm trying to go quick. I don't want anybody to fall asleep on me. <laughs> Matthew 8, verse 5 and verse 13. There's a Roman general there, Roman commander. He has a servant dying. And he has heard all about Jesus. He has seen lepers healed. 
He had told his troops, don't go near that man. He has leprosy. He came by the next day and sees that leper healed. How did this happen? Jesus Christ. Amen. They went to another area where his troops guarded the gate on the south side of Jerusalem. And there was a beggar there who was paralyzed, who had begged. And he commanded his Roman soldiers, stay away from that beggar. He did see away kick him. Just beg clearly that you give him a dime. And now he asks, when he comes back, where is the beggar? Oh, he's not a beggar anymore. He's not paralyzed anymore, sir. How did this happen? Jesus Christ. He goes to another area. He goes to the east side of Jerusalem. And there's a blind man there. This man's really aggravated because he's yelling out, help!
than this. God wants to do some great things in our lives. Uh, we notice here, as God loved us and has forgiven us of our sins, He wants to break our hearts to go after the ones He died for. These disciples left all to follow Jesus, and so should we leave all to serve Jesus. God never forgets you and me. You'll never forget a missionary out there, and you'll never forget what you're doing in the, in the back lines, giving to that missionary or those missionaries. God won't forget you. Don't you forget him. In, in the Congo, January 24, 1964, in the Congo, January 24, 1964, two missionaries were attacked by commies. One is killed. Fifteen other natives of the Congo are killed. One survives. The one that survived goes back. And, it, and one person yells out, why are you going back to those people? This person, this survivor, wrote the book. And somebody said, why are you going back to those people? They deserve hell. And the survivor said, we all deserve hell. Right. Those same people that killed my friend and killed my natives. It's the same people Jesus died. Don't you ever hate anybody? Remember, by the grace of God, there go you. Friend, people are going to hell. Are you making a difference? Are you devoting yourself today to make a difference? All things work together for good to them that love God and call according to his purpose. I'll leave it here. The last thing I'm going to say. I was preaching a revival for a church in 2010 who it was a blessing. It was a church with your name, Lighthouse Baptist, Fairfax, Virginia. And I can actually say that church is exactly like your church. You've got a soul winning pastor like your pastor. You've got people just like you. I don't know what it is about Lighthouse. I, everywhere I go, I find a lighthouse, a good church. Except for one I went to, they were telling us that if we lost in their contest, we would have to kiss a pig. We didn't stay at that church. <laughs> that was one lighthouse I'm going to go to again. But let me not get all on it. But as I was preaching at this church in Fairfax, Virginia, a lady from my church in Maryland, do you remember mine, called me and said, Pastor, I know you're in the area. I know you're leaving to go back to Michigan. Would you please come see my aunt? You know we've been praying for my aunt to be saved many years. And because of you, many people have been saved, and you buried her sister, my mother, Ann Saunders. Ann Saunders was such a godly lady, but when 9-11 happened, she, I, did, I was out of town. When I came back in town, she had already gathered over 70 people in the floor, prostate on the ground. I went to my office, and the prostate in the church prayed for our country to have revival. That's the kind of lady Ann was. She died soon after I got cancer, because she had lung cancer. And I buried her, and her sister wouldn't get saved that day and said, well, I'm not going to be a fool like my sister. I don't need what she has. And I said, you'll regret that when you're in hell. And Amy says she's ready to die. She won't listen to me, but she respects you. She doesn't like you, but she respects you. Would you please, before you go back to Michigan, come and see her. She'll be dead probably by Wednesday. This was Sunday night. She was telling me this. So my revival ended that Sunday. It was something like this. I think we started on Tuesday and we went around to Sunday. So I left that day, Monday, and went over to Maryland. Went to a nursing home up in the Hedrick, uh, near the Baltimore area. And I went up there where she was on a machine and they were trying to keep her alive. She was still talking. She was fading. And the way she had a thing in her mouth and she lost her tongue from her cancer, and so she couldn't speak anymore, so when you wanted to talk to her, you had to write things on the chalkboard. And like, do you want milk? Do you want this? Or do you, do you want more pain medicine? And so I walked in on the chalkboard, and I said, and, and I said, do you know, do you remember me? And she says, yes, I'll never forget you. <laughs> so she knew who I was. And I started talking to her about the lake of fire. I started talking about how her niece loves her so much, and he's sitting there crying, and how I don't know if you're going to die, but they say you're getting close. And the only way you're going to see your sister Anne again is you must receive Christ. And I'm writing this all on chalk. I'm giving her verses. 
And I said, would you please pray with me and ask Jesus to come in your heart? And she wrote, no. And I wrote back, wiped it out, wrote back, do you know if I'm right, you're going to go to hell and Jesus died to keep you out of there? And she wrote back, I don't care. And she died the next day. Her heart was hard. Folks, that's why now is the time of salvation. We've got to get busy. Now, I don't believe everybody's like that. But you don't know if they're like that until you try. And thank God I got to reach that family. And they need to reach her. Don't give up. Be persistent. Your Savior is. Be persistent in your giving. Be persistent in your prayer life. Have a prayer list on your bathroom wall, on your mirrors, on your refrigerator. And don't just put them up there to look at your refrigerator look pretty. Make them as a place for you to pray. To lift them up. Those prayers are as important as a million dollars. And promise God and keep to your promise. He don't break his promises, don't break yours. And you'll never get broken. Give an above and beyond your ties to the world. There's a world out there over the hell like that lady in the bed. Let's pray that God will change their heart and make them say yes to Jesus. But we're never going to know that unless we try. The whole world's drowning and they need the lifesaver and we've got to throw it out. Are you part of that program? Have you been faithful to that program? Are you ready to get in that program? And get in that program. First, God's got to give our heart. Let's surrender our heart to him today. Do you know Christ is your Savior? This was mostly for Christians in a mission time. And maybe you're here and thinking we're loved today. And you're not saved. Don't write no on your heart. Jesus died for you. Write yes. And he'll save you today. Every head bowed to the eye